So a quick acting male birth control drug is showing promise and offering new hope in the world of contraceptives. Here's the deal though, uh, before you get excited, which I didn't want to use the word excited. Uh, this is what happened. Researchers injected mice with the drug and lab results show that it blocks sper sperm form from maturing rather mm -hmm. and swimming, which then prevented pregnancies within 30 minutes after an injection. So joining me now for more on this is CBS News medical uh, contributor, Dr. David Agus. Doctor, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I have a couple of questions, though, because we describe this as quick acting. I saw sort of headlines that described it as on-demand birth control. I don't even know what those phrases really mean. So, it, like, what are we talking about here? Well, for men, the only form of contraception has obviously been a condom, and it's been vasectomy. This was a group of researchers in New York who were developing a treatment for a rare eye disease, and what it was noted is it blocked an enzyme that caused sperm to swim. So 15 to 30 minutes prior to sex, if you take this pill, it will block the sperm from swimming and it works for three, four hours and then the sperm are happy again. So in a sense, you have an on-demand pill that gives some protection. It's 100% protection in that window. If you hit that window, mm. at least in mice. Now it's got to go into males for <laughs> testing. Oh boy. And it's got to go through clinical trials. So it's a couple of years. But right. if you're a mouse, you're pretty happy at the present time. <laughs> That's it's great. a good time to be a mouse, apparently. Just in time for Valentine's Day, yeah. post-Valentine's Day. 15 to 20 <laughs> minutes, though. What a window. Uh, all right, Dr. Agus, I want to turn to something else. Your thoughts on this new report that plant-based foods may reduce prostate cancer progression, which is very promising. Uh, what can you tell us about this and what it means for men's health? So this is an abstract. It's not peer-reviewed. And what mm. they did was they had questionnaires of people over many years on their diet. And people who have more plants on their diet, and these are people with existing prostate cancer, had less progression than people who had very little plants in their diet. So what, what it means is we need to eat fruit and plants in our diet, period. Mediterranean diet is the way to go. It doesn't mean that protein-based sources like chicken and fish and beef are necessarily bad, but what it means is add some plants to your diet. Is this cause and effect? We don't know, it's a questionnaire study, but it's certainly important information that you need to take into account. I feel like all roads lead back to that. More fruits and vegetables, exactly what your mom would tell you. Um, so let's hit some of these questions from the public, uh, Dr. Agus. Um, this person is asking, of course, there's still many questions about COVID. This person is asking whether or not there has been research into COVID-19 and blood pressure problems. Yeah, so Anne-Marie, early on, it was thought that this is gonna be a major, major connection because remember, COVID-19 hits that ACE2 receptor which is a receptor for blood pressure. And there certainly are connections. People who've had COVID-19 can long-term have some blood pressure regulation issues, although it's not common. So it's something that we're following. It's not a dominant effect, but it probably is real. Mm -hmm. And Dr. I guess another question that someone asked, is it possible that people who have never tested positive for COVID just can't produce a positive test? This one's a talker for a lot of people. Yes, yeah, so there, there are two points to that. One is, is that there are a whole cohort of people in the country, and they are very lucky, who are asymptomatic when they're positive. And so they were exposed, they were positive, they didn't even know they had it. Maybe they had a tiny bit of symptoms, maybe they had none, but they clearly have antibodies. And there are two tests to get for antibodies at your doctor. One is what's called a nucleocapsid antibody test. And that's only positive if you have the virus. And the other is a spike protein, which can be positive if you had the virus or you had the vaccine. So if you really want to say, did I have it? The nucleocapsid antibody test is the one. And I don't think there are people who are totally naturally immune. Even if you have some immunity, you're going to make more antibodies and respond if you had the virus. So one more question before I let you go. And I, I hope I don't mispronounce the name of this, but uh, this person is asking about Pervagin, and you can tell me if I pronounced it right or not, whether or not it actually works or other so-called brain vitamins, whether or not they're beneficial. Yeah, so on, online in, in magazines, you're seeing all these uh, 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 advertisements for supplements that can improve cognitive function, mm -hmm. mental health. They are all, I would say, very simply in two letters, BS. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on the air, but they do not work. What we know is that challenge your brain, right? The biggest study ever done in Europe, every year you delayed retirement, you reduce Alzheimer's by 3%. Wow. And over many years, that's a big number. So it doesn't mean you have to work your primary job, 
but get your brain uncomfortable, do things that are difficult, really challenge yourself. And that is the best medicine for keeping cognitive uh, function high, along with lower body mass index and exercising. They work. You gotta use it so you don't lose it. <laughs> Great More advice. ways than one. <laughs> That's news you can use. It is, doctor. <laughs> doctor Agus, thank you so much for joining us.